What's up guys, the Amiga Boys here and I'm finally back with another video for you guys. Today we're going to take a look at 10 insanely overpowered items that since then has been nerfed throughout the PoE history. So while we still have crazy items today such as Headhunter, Ashes Mirror, etc. I'll mainly be focusing on items that has been nerfed in the past. This video is not meant to necessarily point out the best or the most overpowered items in PoE history as I'm almost sure that I forgot something. But please, if I've forgotten anything, feel free to add them in the comments below and I might make a part 2 for you guys. But no more talk, let's get right into the video. First up on the list we have Grand Spectrum. Grand Spectrum is a unique jewel that you rarely see being used today. But back in patch 2.3 where it was introduced, the jewel was very OP. Especially the elemental damage version. Back then the jewel didn't have any limitations on how many you could place, meaning that the jewels would scale exponentially the more you had. At 5 jewels, the elemental damage one would give you 25% elemental damage each, which isn't too impressive by nowadays standards. But if you stack the higher number, let's say 10 jewels, that suddenly went up to 50% per jewel. And if you were to grab all the jewels on the whole tree, you would gain 105% elemental damage per jewel which would translate to over 2000% increased elemental damage in total. Now, factoring the fact that you could double dipping was a thing as well and ignite was pretty broken, it's easy to understand why this item got a restriction. I would have a agree that the current restrictions could be a little bit higher without hurting too much. And then we have the almighty Mjolnir. While the old version doesn't really seem that great compared to the new one, I can assure you that the old one was way better. And that is because the nerf actually wasn't on the item itself, but rather an internal one. The item today has a 250 millisecond cooldown, meaning that your max can trigger the skills 4 times per second. But back in the day, the Glory Mjolnir and Cast and Crit days, all trigger skills didn't have a hidden cooldown at all. This meant that you could trigger as many hits per second as you would have wanted, which also led to a lot of server issues and lags and that might actually have been the main reason for the change. The builds revolving around the Mjolnir started out as being Arc, but later turned into Discharge when people started to see the interaction between the Ramirez Banquet Ring and the Vol's Devotion Amulet. While the item is still being used today, it doesn't really have the same place in the community as it used to have. Back then it was the dream build for many exiles, and I even remember myself trading a Shafts for a Mjolnir and a Vol's Devotion, which back then were 50 and 30x respectively. And then we have the Mighty Wind Tripper. Wind Tripper is one of those items that still are very good today, and you might even still call it OP today. But back in the day, this bow used to be even better. It had more quantity, more rarity, and even more crit chains. This bow had up to 10% base crit, which is crazy. That's even more than some wands do. But while Wind Tripper is still great today, some of you guys probably know that I've always had a passion for Wind Tripper builds, so I had to include it in the video. Windriver builds for me is just a build that never gets boring. The bow combines great damage with magic finds so you'll be able to get the best amount of loot per hour. And if you ever want to try out a Windriver build you can check out my guide called the Amigo Shots on the forums or any of the many other great guides out there. Shout out to those guys as well. But yeah guys, no more advertising, let's get back into the video. And then we have the face breakers. This is also one of those uniques that are widely used today, but back in the day this unique was even crazier. Or well, they might not actually have been as good as they are right now, back then due to the lack of unarmed skills, steel rings, ascendancy classes and abyss duels. But they do indeed seem very OP when you look at them today. The face breakers used to go from 800% to 1000% more unarmed damage, meaning that a max roll 1 would give you 25% more damage compared to using a max roll 1 from today. But that wasn't the only time the face breakers were nerfed. No, actually later on when crit multi got nerfed across the board and Melgaros for example went from 50 to 36% crit multiplier, face breakers were buffed instead from 60 to 90% crit multi. The fuck? Yeah I know right? I don't know what went through GGG's minds but that essentially made the face breakers the go-to crit gloves as nothing else really could compare. Only really a QG's for that sexy instant leech. And it also meant that nobody really used Maligaros. And then we have the crown of eyes. This unique is probably one of the most overpowered items in PoE history. And it would have been even more overpowered if it still existed as a legacy version today. 
While the item does seem very similar to the current version, there's a little difference in the wording. At the moment, Crown of Ice only convert increases and reductions to spell damage, for example from the skill tree or from gear. But back in the day, it worked with more multipliers as well, not only reductions and increases. And this item was one of the main build enablers for the low life specs of Fro and the low life power siphon wanders. The fact that Pain Attunement and even Righteous Fire gave you more attack damage with this helmet equipped led to insanely powerful low life attack builds and was one of the reasons why these items and shafts were close to 100x each. And I can assure you that if this item had had a legacy version, it would probably have been worth even more than back then. The next unique on our list is Reach of the Council. While it's not really that used today, the older versions of the items surely were. Back when it first came out, it was a bow that went all the way up to 375 physical DPS, which itself is higher than any other unique bow in the game. And on top of that, it even had 4 additional projectiles. In theory this meant that the bow first of all could have another gem link, because it didn't have to use GMP on your main skill but also didn't have the less damage from the GMP gem itself. Not having the less damage from the GMP gem itself meant that if you were to compare it to a straight up fist damage bow with GMP socketed into it, it would be as powerful as a 500 DPS bow, while at the same time having another gem slot as well. That's fucking crazy and probably just as good as mirror tier bows out there. But what people slowly started to realize was the fact this bow was best in slot for any poison bow build out there. Because with double dipping being in the game, you previously hadn't been able to use GMP on your main skill due to the less projectile damage applying twice, reducing your damage by a lot. But now that Reach was in the game, Poison Bow Assassins were more popular than ever. Guides like King of the Forest, Ziggy's Ass Reacher and even my own The Amigo Reach rose in popularity and it didn't take long for GGG to both nerf the bow itself and the poison mechanic altogether. But don't worry guys, if you have a Legacy Reach lying around in standard in your stash, don't worry, it's just as powerful before, just not with the whole poison aspect. Everything else works just as fine. And then we have the Rumi's Concoction Flask. And while it's not overpowered in an offensive way, it was kinda OP defensively. Back when the flask first came out, it essentially had double the rolls of a current one. The block chains went up to 40%, which is even higher than you normally get on a shield, and the spell block went up to 20%. And remember guys, this was just a block chance from the flask and it was without flask effect taken into account. So you could in theory go even higher. This made most builds able to get block chains, in some cases even spell block, with a single flask with no drawback whatsoever. This was crazy for hardcore and was just a really cheap way to get a ton of defense with the only drawback of losing an offensive flask. The next unique on the list is Voltaxic Rift. This unique used to be the rarest item in the game back when it had an item level restriction of 78. This restriction was the highest item level restriction in the game and you really didn't see a lot of these drop as most people ran below level 76 maps. Due to the insane requirement and rarity, you could imagine the price such a thing would go for and the reaction it would give if you found one. Exactly. But if you find a reflect back. Oh my god! What? Oh my god. What? Oh. That's mine. That's mine. No way. Fuck yeah. Show. Link, link, link. Oh, oh, my, god. oh my god. No, seriously? Yeah. Congrats, Pulp. The bow was a little different back then as it used to give you 100% of your lightning damage converted to chaos instead of only 60%. This did first of all mean that you got reflect proof since chaos damage can be reflected, but later when poison was introduced, you were also able to poison the enemy with your lightning skills and shock them which double dipped as well. The bow was used in a variety of builds but the two main ones were Voltaxic Spark and Voltaxic Lightning Arrow. Voltaxic quickly lost its glory however when it got nerfed from 100% conversion to 60% as well as nerfed to double dipping and poison. Over the lifespan the unique managed to go from being worth tens of exalts to worth less than a couple of chaos orbs, which is kinda sad. The next unique on the list is Chaos Hard, or as Crip would have said it, Combs Hard. Fuck is shit, what did he do? Oh, I just got Combs. What? <laughs> Shut oh up. my fucking god, fuck you. 
This is a unique you guys probably would kill me for not mentioning, and for a good reason. Because this unique legacy version is the single most expensive non-racing item in the game, with a price tag of around 1400 exalts in Standard League. Yeah, that's a lot guys. And if you haven't looked at the screen and figured it out already, it was because Chaos Heart used to have not 500, but 1000 to maximum life. This was insanely good for any life build out there, as equipping this, all depending on your passive tree, would give you between 2.5 and 3000 maximum life. The item was the single biggest survivability boost out there and was especially great in hardcore. The Kaum's Heart was actually so broken, it was banned from dropping in the first two leagues, Anarchy and Onslaught. The last nick for today is the flask of all flasks, the Vessel of Victar. Well, not the current version, but the old version of the flask. Because it's probably one of those uniques, along with the Reach of the Council, that has been nerfed the hardest in the PoE history. But to be fair, this was definitely the most broken flask to ever exist in Path of Exile. The flask got added along with the Victor map in patch 2.1, but back then, it was nothing like today's version. Vinctor had two uses back then, as well as having instant life and mana leech during flask effect. This was really powerful, especially back when Pathfinder had an infinite flask charge generation with Blade Vortex. Since Blade Vortex was hitting many times per second with 13% instant leech, the only thing that could really kill you was one shots. But the old energy shield items took care of that as well. Since the item obviously was too broken, it got nerfed, but Vile Pact still made it too strong so the Valpact Keystone had to be nerfed as well. But this did not only reduce the popularity of the flask, it also increased the price of its legacy version. Currently the legacy version is around 120x in standard, since the legacy Vector flask now is one of the only ways to get instant leech in the game. But there we go guys, that was all for today, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and also if you have any suggestions, make sure to leave them down below. It could be either for another part, a part 2 of this video, or for any other video, like maybe top 10 Twitch PoE fails or something like that. But yeah, hope you guys have a wonderful day, stay tuned for more videos, and peace out.